Hello YouTube. So first uh, YouTube repair video, first ATV video. Um, I looked everywhere to see if I could find the answer to this question, but I had a bad axle and CV joint on my 2001 Scrambler 400, four by four. And I had people coming over and I wanted to ride this guy before I could get the new one in. And so my question was, can I ride this 400 without this axle in place? In other words, could I remove the pen, remove it from the CV and run it with just the stem and the boot? The answer to that question is absolutely you can, and it does just fine. The only downside is you don't have, you will not have all wheel drive or four wheel drive um, because that axle point will be missing. And you probably don't want to run it for a very long time because I don't know how well these seals would hold up, although they're exposed pretty much the entire time anyway. So, um, Presumably, you'd be able to run it for as long as you want, just without four-wheel drive capabilities. So, but what we're going to do today is we are going to replace this axle. I have ordered it on Amazon. It came in a nice box. Took three days. East Lake axles. Um, axle with joint and CV. And man, it's pretty. It's going to be prettier than the other one. So uh, here we go. I'm going to put it on. I'm going to put on new bearings. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the seals where they are. It, it, there was a seal kit that came with it, but I don't think I need to do that right yet. So here it goes. Okay, I've got it up in the air and uh, taken the, the front wheel off. And um, shouldn't need help with that. It's, uh, but then what we need to do is we need to take the cap off of the demand drive fluid reservoir. And this is where all the, the goo and gunk is. I'm not a mechanic, by the way. So, okay. So we'll get that off with these, um, oh, these torque wrench screws or, or, or such. I just happen to have the tools, but not the, not the speak. Uh, two, three. And what I found works best to get that cap off is a flathead screwdriver. But before we do that, we're going to need a catch pan to be able to catch the fluid that's coming out of here. Um, I want to I want to keep the fluid because I just put new fluid in there recently, and um, I can reuse it. So, all right. So I got my catch pan here, and I know. I probably shouldn't reuse the fluid no matter what. Um, so I've got more. This is type F automatic transmission fluid. Um, according to most forums and such that I read that this can be used as an alternative to the demand drive fluid that is sold by Polaris. And uh, it seems to work pretty good. So we're just gonna pry in here, being careful not to crack or break the seal. And there we go, and we get this nice goopy gook coming out. In fact, it looks like, actually it looks like it might, might be best if I replace it anyway, because maybe it picked up some additional sediment when I, when I replaced it in the first, first time. Okay, so with this set aside, and the seal looks, looks good still, that, with that set aside and this draining, we will be removing the brake caliper. There are two bolts behind here, one there and then one there that we will remove. And then this whole thing, we'll take a bungee cord and hang this up and put it out of the way. Now you're gonna use a 13 millimeter or half inch socket for these, in case you're wondering. one and the other one is right in here there's 
those two. Okay, let me grab bungee cord. I have these really cool short bungees, right? You can get them down at Home Depot in a kit and such, but these work great for hanging the brakes out of the way. In fact, you've got a nice little hook right here and then just hook it to anything just to kind of get it up and out. So in this case, I'm just going to hook it to the frame and we can see that it's up and out of the way there. And then we'll continue to work. Uh, for this, I use a pair of needle nose pliers. We're going to need to take off the, uh, the pin here and bend it out and then take it out and we'll see whether we need to put a new one in and then we'll remove the king nut. All right, so we're going to remove this cotter pin. Not snip it. I'm sure if I leave comments on, I'll get comments around how to do this better. Again, I am not a mechanic. Sure, if there is a correct method to removing a cotter pin. Okay, so now that's out. Set that aside. And then this castle nut here, this is going to be, I think, a full, is this a one inch or 15 sixteenths? socket um so we'll get this off with that there we are there's the castle nut set that aside and from here you can pull the hub assembly off and look what happens we get more fluid we also get our bearing and washer out so i'm going to replace this bearing since the kit came with um with new bearings, so I'm gonna set it aside, but it would be good that uh, from this point forward to take note of the order of, um, of the bearings and the washers because you're gonna to have to put it all back in in the same order. So the order being hub assembly, bearing turned inwards, and then washer and then castle nut and then cotter pin so we're going to reverse that cotter uh, cotter pin castle nut and then we've got washer we've got bearing hub assembly and then inside the hub assembly you may or may not have as well the <laughs> as I now have the full clutch assembly and everything. Oh, what, what a mess. Okay. So actually it would be like this. Yeah, this is going to be the worst video ever. Be like this and then like this. Okay. And then this would be your bearing. Next piece comes off. Your Hillard clutch assembly. Be careful to keep this all as one piece. It's okay if this plate comes off, but you don't want to have to rebuild the Hillard clutch. Um, I made the mistake of pulling it off too quickly last time. This center piece will come out. You don't want that to happen. These uh, bearing rollers will also come out. And this is what I think they call a garter, a garter spring that holds them all together. Try and keep this all as one unit and uh, set that aside. Okay, and then we have the clutch plate. Um, it's got tabs on it. Take a look at it. You want to inspect it to make sure that there are tabs uh, are in good good shape. In fact, you don't want them uh, broken off or anything. A lot of folks on on forums here will say that these are broken off, and uh, that'll that'll basically um, make this whole piece not function. So. Check to make sure that, uh, that these are not broken off. If they are broken off, you can probably find this piece on, on eBay or on Amazon. 
Okay, then we've got another bearing in here. Set that aside. And then here is the whole CV. This is obviously really easy for me to pull out because I don't have it attached to anything. And this is what, what that looks like from that end. You have another bearing here. And it's good to note that this bearing as well as, there are two bearings in here that are just a little bit larger in diameter. Uh, the hole is a little bit larger so that it fits over the top of this gearing here. Um, for example, the, all the bearings look alike, but um, they won't all slide over the top. See how that stops right there? That tells you this is one of the um, external bearings that fits later on in the sequence. So don't try and force that on there, as opposed to, um, these larger diameter bearings will in fact go all the way through. So these will be the ones that you focus on keeping on the inside like this. And then um, the smaller ones will be on the outside of this, uh, this assembly here. Okay, we're gonna set this aside since we don't need this anymore. And we're gonna go visit the bench. All right, so now back at the workbench, this is the new axle. Um, I've already taken one of the bearings out here just to see which set of bearings fit where. Um, if you buy the same kit that I did, and literally, guys, it was under 100 bucks. Um, they'll send you bearings that are packed like this. So this is what I'd received. I received the two bearings that are the smaller diameter and then two bearings that are of the larger diameter, uh, as expected. Um, comes with castle nut and washer as well. It does not come with a cotter pin. So um, in this case, I think the one that I have, it looks pretty good. So we're gonna reuse it. Uh, comment if you think that's a really bad idea. Um, I'm sure I'll find out when I'm riding in the middle of a ride in the desert. Um, okay, so you're gonna get two bearings packed separately per their actual size. I'm just set those aside there. And then we've got the stem with the gear uh, teeth here, and you'll notice how, how nice, nicely packed and how flexible that is. This is uh, this is brand new. So, um, like I said, I'm probably going to replace the other side after after this one. Um, and then down here, the way that this will attach is via this cotter, or not cotter, but I think it's it's a push pin. Um, and I'd saved the push pin from the one that I took out. Um, and here it is. So we'll attempt to use this, reuse this one by pushing it through here once this is in place. Um, it is pre-greased. There is grease and goop all right in here that I just stuck my fingers in, so heads up on that. And what you're going to need to uh, get that in place is obviously a hammer, and then you'll need um, like a, a punch set so for me i got these at harbor freight for like 11 bucks and it's a full kit uh, it looks like it looks like this and this is what helped me get it out i'm assuming i'm going to be able to use the same method to get it in so never done this before we'll see how it goes okay first things first back at the uh at the bike we're gonna have to make some room by taking off a few things because we need this we need this piece right here to be movable so it's attached to this a-frame i don't know what it's called the a-arm maybe um and so we have a couple of options we can take it off using this bolt right here which seems like it's a great idea um, but we'll see how it goes we're gonna try and take this bolt off there's a there's a king nut there a castle nut and a cotter pin we'll take those out and then that should free this arm up because we're going to need that flexibility to be able to get one side of the axle in and through here and then put it back up towards the uh, front transfer case you can see where that goes right there and uh, we'll line that all up so first step first make this more flexible the other option would be to take this long bolt out uh, there's two bolts here one here and then you can get to the other one right here in the front um, and take that take these out and this will lower that whole arm off of the the frame and simply accomplish the same thing 
So I think this is going to work. I've already removed the cotter pin. And this is a 9 16 bolt. We'll see how. Oh, yeah, that was pretty easy. There we go. Okay. Popped off. And then we'll move this guy. Oh, why isn't that easy? I wonder if it's going to need some convincing. Hmm. When I did this before, I took off the other bolts. And that seemed to work pretty good. I've never done it this way before. And uh, I'm not sure if it just needs some persuasion or what. But it looks like it is hanging up here. I might have to do the other route. Okay, well, <laughs> I didn't want to get that on camera in case it went horribly wrong, but here's basically what I did. This was like this. I took me a nice two by six, placed it across the, the A arm here, gave it a nice, nice whack or two with my grandpa's Baltine hammer. This thing, frankly, is older than me. And uh, voila, so that's now off. And this is nice and loose. We can move this all around and we have the maneuverability that we need. Uh, we may, may have to take off this tie rod here, but we're going to try, try without it and see, see if we can get that to get in there. All right. You know, the more I look at this, yeah, the more I think we're going to have to take that tie rod off. So that's the next step. So loosen this bolt and this one, and you've got another castle nut with a uh, um, man, a clip there. Or, geez, why am I having a hard time with that? Anyway, you know what it is. You got to pull that pin out. You got to take the castle nut off here, and we'll take this arm off, and it'll give us plenty of room to move this around. called a cotter pin, by the way. Okay, cotter pin is out. Let's have fun with that one. I don't know. This is where the finesse comes in to experience mechanics. They don't have to wrestle for 10 minutes <clears throat> with a cotter pin. All right, so this bottom one, they are two different nut sizes. This is 17 on the bottom. Then what do we got 14 on top. Nope. We have 15 on top. So there we go, twisting in opposite directions. Should be able to get that loose and come free. side. I like to keep bolts and nuts together. So I'll put them together so I don't use them. And now we have plenty of movement. All right. So 
again, there's the hole there. I've already positioned the back tires to know that my hole is roughly in the same horizontal position. And uh, so here we go. We're going to place that in and just do a best fit initially. And that looks good. And I'm hoping this will slide in. I probably ought to check first. With something smaller than the punch, make sure that your hole lines up. And so I'm using a thin rod. That hole lines up perfect. Well, you know, I made it in the first shot. Good deal. There we go. So that hole lines up. That's where the rod will go. That's looking good. Now we just need to get this portion through here. Why does that look so long? Maybe because I've got the wrong one, though. I guess I should have measured it the other one. Hmm. Indeed. <clears throat> I may need to take this hose clamp off here to be able to pull this out far enough. So let's do that. All right, now that I got this bolt out of the way, which was holding the brake line, I have a lot more room. So let's try this again. <clears throat> okay, horizontal position. That hole is right about there. And slide it right into the sprocket. Make sure <clears throat> the pins lined up. Yep, that's good. And so <clears throat> it's probably safe for me to go ahead and, and uh, put the pin into place. I don't know necessarily how to film that. Um, probably gonna be me frustrated a lot, but um, so we're gonna give it a try. I'll reposition the camera here. All right, I simply moved it to the other side. Let's see right in here from this side I'm going to attempt to install this little guy in that little hole with this persuader um, I have chosen my tools or weapons being two different size punch tools I'll probably get it started and then once I finish it out we'll use the larger diameter tool to get it flush. So let's get under the bike. I'm going to, for safety, put the tire that I took off underneath. I don't know what that'll give me, but I should have some advance notice maybe and be able to <laughs> get my head out of harm's way as I'm swinging a hammer. But here we go. Okay. First thing I notice is this frame piece right here happens to be in my direct line of sight. So we're going to go by feel. I may be taking these gloves off very soon. Just kind of get it started. Okay, I kind of got it in there, but now how to execute a hit on that may be an entirely different story. Oh. Not so bad, it's going. All right, I'll grab my punch tool. Hey, the tire underneath here actually makes a nice pillow. That's what it's for. Okay. The brake that I so smartly thought I put up and out of the way Helpers are actually in my swing, so I'm going to move those to a slightly different position to 
truly get them out of my way. Here we go. Let's try this again. I may cut this portion completely out because this does if you can't see it on the video, then it doesn't make sense in in this piece. Ow. Oh yeah. I remember you hit yourself a lot during this part. Is it going in straight? What a pain. I am going to get gloves on that are not slippery. I'll be right back. Okay, this is designed to frustrate you. Um, I will be the first to admit that it's hard and really stinks, but a couple of tricks that got it in there. First off, you really gotta hit it. <laughs> you gotta hit it hard. I use this to kind of cup it. So this is the this is the pin, the pin. So this covered the pin after I got it into the hole, and this gave me something to strike to get it actually where it wouldn't slip. And you can use a shorter one, right? I, I think I used that until it got it bottomed out. But um, you can strike this and push the pin through and get it to almost flush. So now the challenge is now getting it completely flush. So I'm back to using the punch tool. And uh, it's almost in there. I'll show you. It's it's getting really close. Uh, there it is. You see where I've been whacking at it. But it's got to go all the way flush in there for me to feel safe about riding this thing. So, um, yeah, here we go. I'll film just a little bit of it, but I may turn it back off because I don't feel like editing all this out. But anyways, just be prepared for an adventure once you get to this point. Um, I did read that some folks have used like a an air hammer or something to that effect to get this in there and I like that that sounds really good to me but I don't, I don't own those tools and I don't feel like driving 20 minutes down the road to buy a tool for that so yep see one two three move slip that's gonna hurt and uh, be prepared for some injuries to your hand as well. Um, as I've hurt my hand a few times now, I'm just operating with bruises. Ow. Yeah. I may have to redesign my approach. I'll try this for just a little bit more. Yep, I'm gonna have to try something different. Okay, I've got an idea. So I've got some old breather tube that I have. Here's just some plastic tubing. Because the problem I'm having is, <laughs> besides getting that to go in the hole, is um, keeping this end on the actual piece that I'm trying to strike through the hole. So what if I was able to, oh, let's see, maybe too small. I was thinking, what if I was able to use some of this hose to wrap around the end here, make it somewhat like a socket, just so that it wouldn't slip off 
Uh, and then I think I might be in business. I might be more confident about my swings and uh, get, get this guy in the last half inch it needs to go. So I'm kind of stretching the tubing out here as I'm putting it onto a smaller rod. I know this is not what you signed up for or expected. Um, if anybody's got a better idea other than just simply saying, have a mechanic do it, uh, let me know. I'd love to know the right tool to be able to use for this because uh, I'm just jimmy rigging this at this point. All right, so now will it fit this diameter? Oh, so close. Possibly. If not, I will find what to use in this case. And I might even use either a heat gun or something. Um, you know, probably the time that I'm taking to make this tool, I could have just kept banging on it little by little and get it in. And I think that's, that's probably worth acknowledging, but I'll get it in. Okay, I found something that's working pretty good. So basically, go jumbo size on your on your punch. Um, just smack it in with the biggest one. That'll provide the largest amount of drive surface as well as the largest amount of surface that you hit with your hammer and less likelihood of you hitting your hand. Um, and that seems to be the trick. I'll shut up now. Just pound my hammer. How's that? Get this guy done. Feel free to fast forward. Almost in there. Right. Bottomed out. Hooray, we are in. Okay, that was way longer than I expected, but man, if I would have used that fatter punch to start with, it would have been a business. Okay, so here we go. Now we have plenty of movement here. We're going to, um, no, let me go get my new bearings. Okay, now here again, it's important to know which, which bearings you're going to use. You're going to use the thicker diameter ones, and it's pretty easy to tell because the smaller ones will not go over this, this gear set here. So we're going to use the thicker or the larger diameter bearing. Bearing is going to be the first thing we place in there. And this is going to go inside there. There should be a bearing race or chase, I think is what they call it, in there already. We're going to pull this nice and tight like that. And then the next step will be another bearing going the opposite way like this. Kind of wiggle this in there, holding this nice and tight. And let's see, in there, I need to put my gloves back on. All right, nice slippery glove back on. And here's where we're going to install the Hillary clutch. So we have our clutch as well as our, our plate. One important note as we've uh, also seen on other videos too, you'll notice these little tabs as we were talking about earlier need to be inserted within the little slots there you see how that works um, make sure that that's in there and then you're going to slide the, the clutch in place and that's going to fit right over the top of that gear section and then from there we are going to take one more bearing now that's time out of the smaller diameter bearing pack and place it just like so tapered outside because now at this point, we're going to put our 
of assembly back in place. Make sure that there's nothing inside there that would be considered grime and we're pretty clean there. So holding the back of the CV boot, we're gonna place this into place. And that looks pretty good. Put this over here. And we do our last bearing, again, of a smaller diameter. This time placing the taper inward. And you may need to lift and move and push the housing around a little bit to get that to sit in there, but it should be in there about, about that deep. Okay, so from there, when we take our washer, put that in place, and our crown or a castle nut. I wonder why they call that a castle nut. Hmm, just kidding. It looks like a castle. Put a castle nut in place. And you're gonna need a torque wrench, a torque socket, and it's gonna need to be either, you're gonna need to translate it to pounds per per inch or uh, or have a, a pounds per inch uh, um, torque wrench. So <clears throat> let's, uh, let's get that set up. This is again a 15 16 nut and socket, and um, I'll grab my torque wrench and start torquing it down. All right, so this is the, uh, the brand of torque wrench that I bought on Amazon. I think it was like 35 bucks on Prime. And it works pretty good. And don't, don't skip this step. Don't try this piece. In fact, anything that you've done, if you've taken off the castle nut and put it and taken off the hub assembly and such, don't, don't just tighten it down by feel. Um, I found out the hard way that when you torque this down, what happens is you torque all of it down and it compresses and puts the bearings in place. Um, if you don't tighten it down to the specified amount, what will happen is those bearings won't seat properly and then you'll get drag and pull and you might end up ruining the shaft as well as your bearings. So all your hard work, make sure you have the right tool for this particular one. Yeah, you know, I got my grandpa's hammer and whatever I could find for the, for the pin, but for this one, we're not messing around. This one actually needs to be done correctly. So we're looking at um, torquing it down 165 uh, uh, inch pounds. So oh, I need to get my adapter. So we'll set the wrench to tighten it down to 165 inch pounds, and then we'll back it off and reset it 124. So first 120, 165. Dialing that in. Okay. Locked. Number 65 is going to feel pretty tight. This is it again, sandwiching these, these bearings and pressing them in place. And there's 165. All right, so again, we will back this off and reset at 124. And I've heard you're supposed to be turning this along during that, uh, during that process of tightening it down. So we'll do that for the 124 at the very least here. So we're resetting to 124. Okay, and we're tightening again to set at 124. And there we have 124. Now, if when putting your, your clip back in, your hole alignment is not correct, the manual tells you to tighten it 
until it lines up. In this case, it's pretty close, as you can see here, but I'm gonna tighten it just a smidge so that we get those holes to align just a little bit better. And that's pretty close. We'll place our cotter pin back in, in the hole, straightening it up with some pliers here. It'll be easier to work with. Okay, and we spread the, the pin legs. Me and cotter pins are not friends. the axle in place, we have the pen, found it in, it's in there, and then we have brand new CV and uh, an axle, and uh, now we need to just put the brake pads back and uh, refill the uh, demand drive fluid to spec and put the wheel back on and you're you're up and running, so I'll go ahead and finish all that up here. Okay, we've got the brake caliber back on, the two bolts. We put our brake line clip back in place. We've got the arm back in place with the cotter pins. And I've also got the A-arm mounted again using a cotter pin and king or castle nut for the, uh, for the arm here. Um, now I've put the cap back on. It still is a little stiff. Um, I'm hoping that loosens back up as I place the uh, demand drive fluid back in and uh, get that flowing within that, that area. So that'd be the next step. Okay, you're gonna need an Allen wrench. <clears throat> I don't know what size this is. Just find one that fits. <laughs> Take the plug out after putting the cap back on. And this is the filling section. Now what I've done is I've got an oil can here and that seems to work pretty good. The uh, hub is supposed to hold in there from two and a half to three ounces, um, but there's a quick easy way to tell whether it's full. Um, it's supposed to at four o'clock, when you turn this to four o'clock, if it starts leaking out, then it's then it's full. Now you don't want to overfill these, so I'm just going to start putting some fluid in, and then we were, will periodically check here to see what uh, how much it's full. If I know that's not three. Evolutions. <laughs> And such. Let's see. No, not quite yet. I can go a little bit more. I 
And yep, there we go. Okay. So I would consider that full. Time to put the, the plug back in. Probably should have added a little bit of oil or some of this fluid to the bearings before before I put them in there. Let's see if that loosens up. Here's the <laughs> last tip for you. So remember how this wasn't spinning so great? Um, what I ended up having to do was I took the brake caliper off again, took this off and uh, drained the fluid again. And then I reset the bearings. So I took the whole hub housing out and uh, reset the bearings. But before I put the bearings back in, what I did is I ran them through some of the fluid and made sure that the bearings were good. They weren't, um, they didn't send any bad bearings or anything like that. And uh, just get the fluid on them before actually putting them in sequence. Now, once they're in sequence now, it's spinning like it should. A little bit of resistance, but um, honestly, this is what it was like before um, before I did any any changes to it. So we're back to, to uh, where it should be. And I'm going to put the brake caliper on and um, put the wheel on and go for a little test drive. But uh, that's pretty much it. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you uh, give me a like and uh, refer it if you want to uh, for your own projects. And let me know if there's anything that, uh, that I could have done better in this space. Um, my first one. Don't be too harsh. Thanks. <laughs>